Okay, let's check this one. This one. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about jealousy, jealousy, uh, and um, possibly if someone went on a business trip and got triggered or got got jealous or triggered uh, and on that. But I want to talk about it from a few different angles. The first angle I want to talk about jealousy uh, and getting triggered if someone, for example, is doing well or not including me in uh, certain things is talk about, talking about it from the uh, self-inquiry point of view uh, to start off. So if, if I take on board that everything in this world is going to come up uh, to, to trigger me, which I have not yet transcended. So all things within my ego, which are still triggerable, will, will arise in consciousness at some point, especially if, you, especially if you're a spiritual seeker of any type. Because to be a spiritual seeker of any type is to ask for freedom, is to ask within, the, within the one's soul for freedom Therefore, everything that is not free needs to be needs to arise in consciousness, so that the uh, so that it can be transcended. So, I mean, one could look at it from. I mean, I talk maybe a little bit later on about why these things might come because of uh, past karmic incidences, but they they come up. So, if you, especially if you are interested in uh, any kind of teacher of enlightenment, everything will 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 arise. So, for me. Um, uh, if I'm, if I'm in, a, in a job or in a relationship where I feel spiritually I need to stay in here for the time being, then it's an opportunity for transcending the hooks. And the hooks are in me. The hooks are not in the external world. But the external world is playing along to try and help me to transcend what are the hooks in me that get hooked into that type of event. Having Because nothing outside of myself uh, nothing outside of uh, my my essence has any power to 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 do anything except that I have a belief system which means I'm vulnerable or can be it seems like I can be a victim to that type of hook arising in perception. So let's say um, let's say I'm with someone and they're doing they're doing you know becoming successful and they're leaving me out of the loop then um, that's just a thought arising in consciousness. So that thought, the reason why it's probably triggering is because it's a belief. It's a, it's a thought which has a lot of significance uh, within the ego. You know, like if someone said, I've just bought a red pillow, that might not trigger you. But if someone said, like, I've just earned three million pounds in a deal, that, that's just a, a few words, but, uh, but that can trigger. So, Hence, it's not, you know, vocal sounds in and of themselves have no power to trigger you, except unless there's some kind of symbolic projected meaning that you're, you're, you're associating with, the, with that. So, from a self-inquiry point of view, uh, sounds or words or thoughts that, they, that they you pick up in consciousness are uh, because there's projected meaning. So, you just ask, what's observing the thoughts? What's observing the thoughts? And what's it, you know, it may arise a replay as a thought, like, um, oh, you know, I'm jealous because they're earning more money than me, or it might arise as a picture, you know, or they're, they're, they're probably like gloating at how good they're doing. So it might arise as a visual image, um, or it may arise as a kinesthetic feeling, you know, suddenly there, there is a feeling of uh, jealousy or envy or hatred or um, uh, disconnect. So that those arise. So then again, what's what's observing those thoughts? So I mean, that could arise for me. Like suddenly, I become jealous of someone who seems to have more than me. So then a, a story, a dialogue starts to arise in consciousness. Like the ego starts to make a big story about it. Oh, I'm jealous of them. They're doing better than me. I wish I was doing better than them. But again, immediately take it to the observer. What's witnessing the story, and what's witnessing the thoughts? So if I go to the observer of the thoughts then immediately there will be some detachment. If it's a big jealousy, or a big, if, the, if the story seems to have a lot of uh, juice in it, then I'll ask, well, you know, go to the observer, but the observer will be interested in the story. So then go to the observer of the interested observer. 
and then the observer of the interested observer will usually have no interest in the story and then you'll be dissolving that, uh, that attachment, that hook into the story. Same thing if there's images that keep popping up. You, the images keep popping up and there is interest or attention given to those images but then ask what's observing the images. So is the observer of the images interested in the images? If the observer of the images is interested in the images, then ask what is observing the observer of the images? Is the detached observer of the observer interested? And it's not. Because as you go to the observer, you lose... The, the detached observer has not got any interest in anything external. No object that passes is, any, is interesting. Because you lose that... It's only the field of the ego that latches onto an object, like a thought or an image or a feeling, and seems to, get, seems to make a story around it. So as you detach, keep going to the observer, the same thing, even if a kinesthetic feeling arises potentially in the body, like suddenly there is a feeling of jealousy or a feeling of anger or fury that comes up, it's unfair, you know, or that's a dialogue, but something is... When the feeling arises, there is that which is observing the feeling, which is not the observer of the feeling is not the feeling. Because a feeling is something that comes and goes. So when thoughts come and go, when feelings come and go, when images come and go, realize that there has to be the observer of all of these, because these are all objects. These are discrete objects. Remember, all discrete passing objects, like a thought, can be here and then it cannot be here. Like an image can be here and then it cannot be here. Um, a feeling can arise and then pass. So that which observes all things that come and go, like this passing thought. Like, for example, let's say I'm feeling peaceful and serene, and suddenly an event seems to occur to the ego, and suddenly there's a thought about jealousy, suddenly there's a feeling about jealousy, and suddenly there's images about... So these weren't here a split second before, and yet the observer that observes all these things arising is still here. And it's still witnessing, but not hooking in to any of these, just, just a few seconds, to the, these discrete objects. So, again, so, so to classify, so you can just think of the feelings and the thoughts and the images, they're just passing objects. So you go to the observer of them, and then if the observer is interested, then go to the observer of that, and keep doing that. And you'll be washing away the inner attachment that wants to keep going, hooking in and hooking in. You keep dissolving that, and you keep doing that. And these triggers will keep, uh, keep coming. And uh, so that's one thing. Uh, so keep doing the observer. Keep going to the observer. The other thing uh, to do from um, uh, uh, a Course in Miracles perspective is just to do the Course lessons, pray for a miracle, see it differently, and so this I could see peace. Um, or a lovely friend of mine said, uh, you know, God, heal the conditions which have manifested, manifested this, help them see in truth and pray for a miracle. But just doing all of those things, I mean, Dr. Hawkins um, mentioned something which I often mention in the videos, which I really like, about um, uh, praying for forgiveness for the one in me who's uh, engendered jealousy in others in this lifetime and past lifetimes, you know, in case there's a karmic component. But... Um, when I'm in jealousy, I'm going out into the world. I'm hooking into my story, into the feelings and the thoughts. When I'm going to the observer, detaching and going to the observer, I'm going deeper within and letting go of the story, letting go of the hooks. Because the only reason, um, the only reason something seems to be stuck in consciousness is because there is a latent projected meaning on it. And actually, you... Usually, here's the thing, when you fully release the projected meaning of anything held within the ego, it usually more or less disappears from consciousness. You know, so hence, I just quickly put it in, in here, I, I mentioned it before, like I'm, I come from a food addiction background, so if, you know, so if, to me, if someone put a donut on the table, then I would notice that donut the, the whole, for the whole meeting, if a donut was on the table, I would notice that donut. But for some, another person who's not interested in donuts, they could be in the same room and they would not even notice for the whole hour that there was a donut in the room. 
So my experience on leaving the room would be, oh, it was tormenting. There was a donut on the table for the whole hour. <laughs> And another person, and that was, my, that, that was my experience of the one hour in the room. And yet there could be another person sitting across from me, and someone could ask them, like, what was your experience of the room? And they said, well, it was just very, very peaceful, nothing much happened, you know, and uh, I, don't, I can't remember what happened in there. So it's like, so actually, when, you, when, when there's no projected, when there's no symbolic meaning or projection from within the ego, it's not registered. You don't even know it existed. Mm -hmm. So, so, and I found that when doing this work, going to the observer, cancelling my belief, I like uh, lesson 14 from God did not create it so it's not real. Because my donut picks up separation. That's the job of my ego, to register objects, to create the, the idea that I'm in separation in this moment. So as soon as my ego registers an object, it creates a sense of separation from the now, you see. So all my ego is doing is recognizing, you know, there's a cup, that's a discrete object, there's a thought flying past, that's a discrete object. This body is me, that's a discrete object. And as it picks up all these objects, I start to feel a sense of separation in the present moment. There is no such thing as objects. Objects are not real. Not in, the tr not in truth, there is no such thing as an object. Because as, as we go into the, what I call the non-dual realm, there is no such thing as this and that. There, everything is within the field of oneness. So, hence, as you go to the observer, you're dismantling the ego, creating the idea of special objects. Because uh, special objects don't exist in truth. So, if I say, you know, I did, you know, like doing something like, God did not create donuts, they're not real. God, you know. And through that, you know, through that, I'm dissolving, I'm dissolving my ego's fascination with the projected meaning of a donut as an object in which you get payoff. Now, this thing of donuts as objects is is a metaphor. People might think I'm just talking about donuts for my. The donut could be a donut could be your boss who's very successful. A donut could be like a hot girl. A donut could be um, a, a glass of alcohol. A donut can be whatever it is. A don't, you know, so actually, as you start letting go of these things, you, your level of consciousness of what you are, this experience of feeling separated in the moment starts to dissolve. The more you release the ego's fascination with holding stories which are based in separation, you know, like I was uh, sharing a little bit earlier today about my mother having passed. But, you know, you know at, the low levels, at the low levels of consciousness, I experience myself in separation from my mother. And as you get to higher levels, as you let go of, like, I'm not my body, I'm not my thoughts. And as you start to experience a sense of essence, which is beyond uh, mother and thoughts in the story, then this sense of separation from the death of a loved one starts to dissolve and it invites a sense of peace, that there is a sense of undying consciousness which is not affected, not affected by things like jealousy or whatever but it's important to just dissolve it, it's an opportunity uh, to do it. I mean the other thing, I mean that's, this is just a recent thing that came to me as an intuition with jealousy is that I get jealous when, uh, when I'm in my ego and I think that I'm living in a world of lack or, uh, uh, or limitation. And, and those kind of ideas start. So if someone's making more money than I am, oh, they're more successful, that's based on an idea of a world of lack. You know? So it's like when I let that go, it's like there's always, in, there's always like an infinite... Uh, yes, it comes from my ego's belief that there's something special is a, like if he has more money, then I can't have more money. It's like he's got more of the money in the world, and that means I'm going to be have to compete with him. And now I'm going to have less money, or if uh, so, it's some kind of like lack kind of thing. Causality. It's also causality as well. So sorry, you wanted to say. Anything. I was going to say it for you. I thought it was really amazing um, when you described the observer. Yes. And then observing the observer. Yes. And I've heard Doc talk about that before. Yes. Um, but whenever I've experimented myself, it's been with awareness or silence, 
So for example, if I'm uh, processing some feeling, um, just say if an intense feeling comes up, I'll try to be aware of it, but if it's particularly painful, it's quite difficult to do. And then I've never actually been aware of the thing that's been aware of the feeling. I think that's really good. And my, my question was, just say if a painful feeling comes up, do you choose to do the letting go method by experiencing it or do you become aware of the awareness or generally speaking because i've been doing both the observer and the letting go process feel the feelings process for some 17 years usually intuitively uh, the processes take place without any kind of volition but um, often with intense feelings what will happen is if you do it like this is the thing like for 18 years i've known that when an extreme feeling comes in, you have to go straight for it. So I've had like 18 years mm. of like, like, you know, someone steps on your foot, you suddenly got to have an operation, someone suddenly dies. Like, because you've been doing it for 18 years, every time something major happens, it becomes like an automatic process, whereby instead of trying to run, it's like, for 18 years, it's like every time something horrible happens, you go into it. So it becomes like a natural, natural thing and uh, so there is a sense of feeling the feelings and usually with a heavy feeling it's easy to do the letting go feel the feelings first and it's easy, usually easier to do the witnessing observer when there's a less of a charge generally because it's like uh, just letting go of the story and being 100% with it is easier with the massive thing hitting you but I've also found that um, sometimes the most extraordinary things happen when you can do the observer in a, in a strong charged uh, situation. Um, this I think was the grace of meeting one of my teachers, Muji. Um, so uh, I think if uh, you get the chance to go into the observer with the teacher, and we can, we can try it today, is it, it shatters a lot of the ego belief systems of what's possible. And uh, I and this is actually um, this is um, I I uh, something like I don't know was it 16 years ago I went to see Muji I had kidney failure at the time I was in a state of deep fog and exhaustion and I thought that was a medical there was a medical reason to be clinically exhausted all the time with kidney failure and I went to him and he asked me like what's you know he was talking about what's observing you know what's observing uh, what's observing your feelings what's observing your thoughts. And within about three or four minutes, I was in a state of absolute peace and happiness and bliss. And I, I believe medically that that's impossible. You know, I've been living in a state of exhaustion. And if you, just, if you go to the observer of your, sta your state of ill health, the observer of the state of ill health is not in a state of ill health. You know, hence, you know, like if suddenly jealousy arises, the observer of, is the... This is another one. Is the observer of jealousy jealous? No. The observer of jealousy is not jealous. So you you know you, you don't have to ask it, but it's kind of there's an intuitive awareness that when you're in the pure observer of the witnessing of jealousy, the witnesser of course is not jealous. And of course, like if you're in, if you've got like a medical condition where you're feeling exhausted all the time, exhausted, drained, and tired, and you have this belief. Well, I have kidney failure, so I have to be tired and exhausted. But actually, the observer of the condition is not tired and exhausted, you see. You, you check that out as in your experience, because being exhausted and having a medical condition is, is an object, if I can use that word. It's a, a thing that something knows when it's tired and something knows when it's not tired. The observer that knows tiredness and knows non-tiredness is not either. It's observing these fluctuating states that arise in consciousness. So hence, as soon as you go to the observer, suddenly you're in a world of limitless peace and energy and freedom. And having that one experience with the teacher of enlightenment, you realize that actually there is no such thing as uh, physical health ailments and exhaustion and tiredness. Just, it's only because of attachment to the story that these things are experienced. As soon as you're in the witness, so they dissolve in a split second. That was like an enlightening experience. 
to know. And so it shatters a lot of the belief systems that uh, are within the collective consciousness of humanity. Like, is it possible to have a miracle in a split second? Is it possible to have a severe mental illness, physical illness, sorry, kidney failure, but yet with exhaustion and yet suddenly, feel, suddenly be in a state of high energy within, within a few seconds? Is that possible? Until you experience it, you realize actually that if I'm, if I'm tired now, if I'm jealous now, if I'm angry now, uh, you know, if I have a, a storm of thoughts going through my head, actually, if I can be in the, if I can be in the pure witnessing of that, it, the whole thing collapses within a split second. It's like you cut the juice of the ego. It's only that because the ego is hooking into thoughts or the feeling that uh, you experience it. And once you're in the pure witnessing of it, it's like, you know, tiredness disappears, the whole story collapses. So, to answer your question, generally it's easier to just experience and not label when a big feeling arises. But, I, I would highly recommend always try and be observer as well, on big ones. At even the at the beginning, right from the start, because one of the most life-changing things was to experience the observer in a storm. Mm. Because if you do feel the feelings in a storm, it will take you a period of time to get relief. Because when I did, like suddenly, let's say, if someone runs over my pet dog, <coughs> I've got a pet dog, but if someone runs over and did the feel the feelings, I'd be feeling those feelings for a period of time. But this is the thing with the observer. If you go to the observer purely in one second, it would wipe out the whole grief. Yeah. So that was my experience. It's like, feel the feelings, it's like it takes a period of time and you get there. But if the, the observer is the most stunning and fast thing because you can literally, it's like an act of grace, detach from the whole story and you're in a state of limitless peace. Like, so there are people in this room who have experienced it. You can be in a massive identification with the ego and then suddenly it's like you're in limitless peace within a split second. So, so I really reckon, yep. Um, you mentioned you had that experience when you were with Muji. Yes. Are there any teachers today who could do that? Like we were discussing Rupert's fire is quite high and yes. Dalai Lama is quite high. Are there any other teachers that are alive today? I, I think uh, usually the, the, the teachers who are from the lineage of Ramana Maharishi uh, are, do this kind of process. So Muji wrote from Papaji, uh, as I understand it, yes, uh, Rupert is also inspired by Ramana Maharishi, the non-dual, non which is, um, who am I, or what am I, it doesn't really matter, who am I, what am I. So, the thing is, like, if I experience myself as limited, something is observing my experience of limitation. So, like, if someone says, uh, if I ask, like, what are you now? experientially and you say I'm, I'm my thoughts then I can say like okay you experience yourself as your thoughts what is observing the thoughts can you experience the observer of your passing thoughts if you manage to experience that you realize that you are not your thoughts you are the the what the observing field of the thoughts or if someone says like oh I'm feeling grief in my in my stomach well, grief in my stomach, that's what you experience as yourself, if you experience that. <clears throat> but what is observing that grief? Is the observer of the grief in grief? So you, 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 you inquire, not with your head, you don't inquire with your head, but you see through a spiritual experience, is there a what or witnesser of the grief in the stomach? And when you're in the witnessing field of the grief in your stomach, suddenly that will dis you'll realize that you're not in grief. Yourself is not in grief. Your ego might be identifying with the feeling and experiencing self, but your ego is not what you are. Your ego is a sense of limitation, but the yourself is not in limitation. Your true self is not limited. But to experience that, to experience that yourself, your true self is not limited by thoughts or by grief or by jealousy. Each time you, it's like you, you're, I think it's like a kind of a baptism. It's like you get, you get identified in your ego, and then you say, well, what am I? Who am I? Go to the observer, and, and then it's like you were in a nightmare. <gasps> you know, you're in a story of jealousy and people doing better than, than you, and then suddenly you go to the observer, and then suddenly it's like, this, how was I 
sort of insane enough to believe this story because the truth of me is, is not affected by any of this stuff. This is just passing stuff. And in the absolute, um, in the absolute, in, I call it the witnessing field, it's, it's not really sort of cut as well. In the witnessing field, it's like all is safe for all eternity. And this was just like a temporary insanity. Okay. <clears throat>